Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of That Solo Life. We are the podcast about solo PR pros or marketers or writers or anyone who is in business for themselves. My name is Michelle Kane. My company is Voice Matters. And I am here as always with my wonderful co-host, Karen Swim, who heads up Solo PR Pro, which is the organization that brings all of us together. And how are you doing, Karen? I am doing well. Hello, everybody. I know that sounds weird to say, considering what's happening in the world, but you have to find your bubble <laughs> and sort of live there. <laughs> that, that, that is true. That is true. I mean, yeah, you know, there are many layers to this and there's a ton of suffering and, and, and fear around us. And, and yeah, we experience it too, but you know, all in all, you know, when you do your check every morning, okay, I'm up, I'm breathing. Um, everyone, everyone around me is is doing okay, and amidst all the uncertainty and everything. But um, that's sort of what we wanted to talk about today, with the uncertainty and just seeing things starting to slowly try and reopen. Um, what does that mean for your business and and us as you know the counselors counseling businesses? How could we be pivoting yet again, pivot, um, to position ourselves to be most helpful to them and guide them through this? So that's kind of what we're going to chat about today. And yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Looking forward. Yeah, because we're going to have to. And it's going to be completely different. I mean, you already, you know, here, you know, thinking, well, oh, I can't wait to go to a restaurant. Well, it's going to be a little different for a while. There might be less tables and you you know, you'll probably be using a paper menu that you throw away right away, that kind of thing. And what does that mean for, for your client? You know? Yeah. What does that, and what does that mean to how you serve clients? So right. I think the fun part about this is that, you know, it, it allows us to just take a moment and really brainstorm. You know, there are some obvious things like we know that social distancing is going to, um, at least for the immediate term, stay with us. I, and I think we'll, we may see it in some form throughout the rest of 2020. And so obviously, you know, there's obvious things like fewer people allowed into, you know, stores, retail locations, restaurants at any one time. Right. Um, obviously, restaurants are going to have to change their floor plans. If schools go back to school, classrooms have to be completely reconfigured, um, which is why I don't think a lot of schools are going to, you know, start back at all this year. And maybe not until I, I can honestly understand why they're saying 2021 in some places. But, you know, when we think about the changes that are ahead, as Michelle said, what does that mean for you and your job and the types of problems that will exist that you can solve? And I think that that's really important, you know, not just for the travel and tourism or the people that are in food PR, but for all of us, Um, It's important to do a little forward thinking and to be a little futuristic and to look not only at the rest of this year, but going forward, the the lasting changes that may come out of this time period. Right, right. And, you know, just thinking ahead and, you know, keeping that steady drumbeat, uh, the one thing we're going to have to just instill in our clients or prospects is the need to communicate to communicate well, to communicate clearly, to communicate creatively, to um, really, you know, create a community. Um, I've seen that in practice, you know, even with a couple of local restaurants where you see just even in interactions on Facebook, how somehow they've created a community that is now there for them. And, you know, you, you could just see the support and I've seen it too in, in a client that's that's now able to come back part way. Um, you know, people on social are there and and supportive. So, you know, think about that. You know, we always, I don't know, I, I tend to counsel with, with my clients. You know, you want to try somehow to create a sense of community. And that's not always easy, depending on what industry you're in. You know, it doesn't mean you're going to set up a Facebook group or anything like that. But it really 
almost speaks back to your tone, the, you know, how you communicate uh, with your audiences, you know, it's just a different way of speaking. And I think in these stripped down times where it's like, look, we don't have time for a filter here. (laughs) Yeah. You know, this, this is how it is. And, and we want to be helpful to you. And, you know, we know that, that you're uncertain as well. We all are. So let's, you know, let's just, just be real with each other for a bit. And it's, you know, it's refreshing in a way. And so now from there, how do we move forward? I mean, I love that you mentioned social because I think that, you know, this time where we are unable to connect in physical ways, that social media has really been having a moment, um, a resurgence and a renewed interest and, and no longer are people, you know, ranting against these social media platforms. They've been a lifeline in so many ways. And, um, people are doing exactly what we've always advised them to do is creating community. And the restaurant industry is a perfect example. I've seen restaurants become heroes. Um, they have, you know, they've, they're selling groceries now. Um, yes. which is a wise move to make use of the of the produce and the things that they have on hand that are rather than having it go to waste. They um lots of the vegan restaurants in my area have gotten together and they they're feeding people that have lost their jobs. So they're, you know, right. organizing drop offs a couple of times a week to families that need vegan food, which is amazing. And I mean they become like little community activists. And, you know, these are restaurants that are hurting, but they channeled that into doing good. So the thing that I would say is that while people are using social media now and they're using it to build community and there's lots of engagement for us as communicators, we need to be able to steer the way forward and think about, okay, how much of this will be lasting change? Because at some point people are going to leave their homes and they're going to return back to work. They're going to return back to some semblance of a normal life. Maybe there won't be concerts on the weekend. Maybe there won't be, you know, um, big conferences that business people attend for a while, but there will be other things that will pull on their attention So how do you think about preserving that intimacy and that connection in a post-COVID world? Right. Right. And, you know, know that the community you create now is the, you know, those are the eyes and ears you're going to take with you into this post-COVID world. So it's, it's important to cultivate it even more so now. So, and I think, you know, Social is key because where are we except on our screens? And, you know, there are also ways to build, build up your email list that aren't shallow or or self-serving, you know, Um, you know, just really put, put yourself out there in new and interesting ways. Be a helper. Um, I know for my clients, I try and, you know, share things that would be helpful to them and of interest to them that other organizations are doing, you know, like the, the town improvement associations and things like that of, Hey, look what's happening here. This is a resource for you. Oh, FYI, you know, Hey, the, the PPP programs that replenished, just, you know, little things to be that resource, because I know that's what I'm looking for. There are a couple yeah. of, of people on Facebook, you know, businesses and non that have really stepped up. And I know now Oh, hey, they're going to have that information first because they have had, you know, they've had it first so far and they've been really great about updating everyone. So you will be remembered for what you do now. Um, and I think too, you know, as, as we move ahead, I mean, think of all the different types of businesses, you know, that are, may have to limit how many people are in their building at a time and this, that, and the other. Uh, you know, for restaurants, maybe that's a new way to use an online reservation system or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know there's a a restaurant near me that opened within the within the last year or so that they don't take reservations, but they 
they have a text message system. And I thought, well, that's fantastic, especially since I'm only five minutes away. So I can literally go home <laughs> and yeah. wait for my text message. But, you know, a, a lot of the technology is all, already exists. So yeah. you just have to sit down and, you know, think through, okay, these are, these are the potential scenarios. And even if you don't have the hard information from your local health department yet, you know what's coming. So right now, you know, my car dealer client, yes, in Pennsylvania, we can now sell cars online, you know, in a contact free way. So now we want to develop, okay, they have a CRM where they can set up appointments and this is how we'll do it. Um, so it's, you know, you have a lot of it already at your fingertips. And if you don't, it's certainly out there and it'll be, you know, relatively simple to create it. And, you know, and if it's just something you don't want to deal with, well, that's what we're here for. So we are happy Agreed. to help you with that too. Um, and also certainly to craft your messaging. And by craft, I certainly don't mean to be false or phony, but, you know, you may need the help of, of a comms professional to, to really make sure that your messaging is, is true to you and, and really resonates with your audience as, as we go through this. Yeah. And pivoting to, you know, professionals who do the work, you know, it is important to really sit down and think through these scenarios and think about, you know, what does that mean for messaging in the future? What does that mean for planning? If mm -hmm. you, you know, are looking at strategic plans um, for the next couple of quarters and, and you're thinking, okay, without live events, without the ability to have large groups, even, you know, maybe you serve retail locations, um, what technology needs to be introduced? How does that change your, your public relations program? How does that change how you communicate with your clients' publics? Um, those are all important things to tap into because, you know, we don't simply do the messaging. We're helping um, develop and shape the strategy for organizations. And we're helping them to think through the scenarios, um, not just in terms of the communication, but in practical ways too. And we're helping them to look at, you know, creative ways to um, hit the revenue numbers because mm -hmm. let's say that that's the way that they've done it has changed. And it may be a permanent change or it may be a temporary change, but it's something that we need to be part of those conversations as well. Um, and then, of course, there's all of the ethical considerations that, you know, as public relations professionals, we have a duty to um, make sure that there is an ethical infrastructure that's building. And so I feel like there's a lot of work for us to do. and. Um, now is a time for optimism and, you know, for saying, okay, we're, we're in the situation now. We're all getting a little tired of being quarantined, but what's next? Right. Right. And, and it's what, what you just mentioned is so important. And I, I think it's a lot of things that, that businesses don't consider when they look to hire a, a public relations consultant is because especially us as solos and micro agencies, we're business owners too. So we really come alongside you. Not only do we write a slamming sentence, but we can give mm -hmm. you sound business counsel through the lens of your constituency, you know, where you might not, you know, where you might not have that peripheral vision. We are your peripheral vision in, in many ways. So, you know, a long time ago, I heard someone say, you know, your, your comms person should always have a seat at the table, the main executive table, just to know what's going on and to help you troubleshoot and fashion how you're going to move forward. And that's really never been more important than now. So, you know, it may not work in every client situation, but just, you know, ask the questions of, well, hey, what's your, how are you going to work through this? And what are you anticipating? You know, can we talk about it? Maybe I can be of, you know, some help there. Yes, completely agree. And, you know, for me too, thinking about the future for clients also has me thinking about the future that I love to see. Mm -hmm. um, because, it's, you know, this is definitely not a chapter that I would have written in, <laughs> in, in our story. No. <laughs> no one would, you know, and I don't want to diminish that it's been a time of loss and pain, but there have definitely been some benefits, you know, from a professional perspective, 
I love that there is now a forced acknowledgement that our lives are not these compartments, that life and work are a continuum. And I've watched people that normally don't have to deal with that learn to manage and to see life as a full spectrum. So work is not separate. You're working and you're living not only in the same space, but with the same people. So now your coworkers, you know, unofficially be uh, your family unofficially becomes your coworkers. You're all sharing the same space together. And I, you know, I felt like in some ways, yes, I get how that's more stressful, but I also feel like it has made people realize a part of their life that they may be neglecting for the work part. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I, I hope that we can carry that back in. So when people return to a physical office, my hope is that we'll see more companies offering flexibility when it's possible. So, you know, I'd love to see companies, you know, say things like, you know, sometimes you don't feel well enough to go into an office, but you feel well enough to work. Right. Work from home that day. Right. What's the deal? I mean, offering those options. If you have a sick kid, um, rather than stressing about childcare, work PT- from home. Yeah. Like, Maxing out your PTO. Really, yeah. Yeah. More flexibility. And everybody's not cut out to work from home full time. Some people don't want that at all. But having that option built into work and not being penalized for being remote is something I love to see. And I love to see people loosen up a little bit and recognize that we are full on human beings with a whole entire life that does not um, revolve around just work. Like, yeah, we have a life outside of work and and it's okay. Um, I just, I don't know, because I've seen people be more human and I love for that to stick around after this whole thing goes away. I agree. I agree fully. I think, you know, the fact that, you know, many companies have been forced to allow remote working, maybe they'll, that has just crashed through what I, I perceive as a trust barrier. Um, I, I presume that's why many have been reluctant to do it. They just think, you know, I, I think back to the, uh, the, the meeting I attended where, you know, a client was investigating new, new software or something. And there was another attendee, not related, who asked the, the vendor, you say you work from home on Fridays. So if I need something, is my person going to be sitting around in their pajamas, drinking orange juice? <laughs> I, I I don't know how far back my eyes rolled because I thought, yeah, and, and guess what? They'll hop on their laptop and help you. It doesn't matter if they're in their pajamas. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's like if if you hire someone with a good work ethic, you're going to get someone with a good work ethic and it's not going to matter what the setting is. And they'll probably perform even better for you knowing, right? Removing that stress of, ah, oh, do I have to use my PTO to make my take my child to the doctor? And well, I don't know what time we can get in because I haven't heard back from them yet. And it just dominoes and, and you know, remove that from the equation of like, yeah, sure. You know, yeah, absolutely. We know you'll get it done. And, and, you know, and if you don't, then we'll have that conversation. Well, you know, I've heard of some companies that um, have micromanaged through this time. So they have yeah you know, daily Zoom check-ins and they want to make sure that people are working. And Ugh. and so my thinking about that is, you know, for Pete's sake, we're in 2020. Yeah. We all know that the one thing that is going to be true forever and ever is that there are going to be great workers that are going to be in your top 1%. There's going to be the middle of the road workers and there's going to be poor workers. Right. Hire good people and empower them and trust them to do their job. Right. And I think a part of that is setting expectations and allowing people to focus on results. Like yes. in my mind, for a lot of jobs, I don't really care what you're doing every second of the day. I simply care that the work gets done. Right. And if that means you're a remote worker and your schedule is to work a few hours early in the morning and take a few hours off and then work more in the afternoon, I really don't care. 
I seriously don't care if I'm getting the results right. and, and our, you know, our, our tasks are being taken care of. And if you're client facing or client's needs are being met and, and the work is great, I don't really care how you get it accomplished. And I, I would love to see us move more on results based rather than hours based because I think that happy people keep your company happy. If somebody is happy working remotely and they're doing it in sweatpants and pajamas, have at it. Yeah. Have a happy worker that is going to, and, and they're connected to the vision of your company and they are thrilled to be working there. That's a good thing for you. I, I So I, I just feel like we need to evolve in the way that we judge people and the way that we deploy our workers. Um, if nothing, I think this time has hopefully opened our eyes that there is another way to approach work. Agree. Agree. And uh, I was having this conversation with a colleague last night too. And, you know, we've talked about this here as well. We're excited to see what new, what, what this brings that's new, a new way of working, uh, you know, what startup is coming up with the next great tool that we'll all gather around to make business better, uh, new systems, new approaches, you know, really a, a, a shift has to come out of this. I don't know what it's going to be, but there's got to be some positivity that, you know, there's a reason we were all being put through this. So hopefully it's, it's you know, for the inevitable good of everything. Um, even though it comes at great cost and that's not to, to brush that aside at all. Um, it's certainly coming at great, great cost of varying degrees, but you know, that, that good old human spirit, (laughs) Yeah, that can do attitude, you know, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's gotta be for, for something purposeful. Um, so yeah. So we'd love to hear your ideas you know, how has this changed your idea of what work looks like? Or, you know, what are you su- already suggesting to your clients or thinking about in the future? Or even as, you know, you approach approaching new clients, uh, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. So visit us at soloprpro.com. Uh, please share this podcast if you think it's worthy. And we hope you do. Um, and uh, yeah, subscribe. And until next time, thanks for listening to That Solo Life. <laughs>